Welcome to Transmathematica. I'm James Anderson. Today we're going to talk about the proofs that attempt to persuade you that division is by zero is impossible because of 1 over x. These proofs are wrong and the people presenting them are mistaken. But the proofs are very seductive, they're very deceptive. So as a technique to criticise them, I'm going to assume that the proofs are lies, that they are deliberate deceptions. And by assuming that they are a lie, I will arm myself psychologically to look out for the deceptions. So in this video, I'm going to tell you two things. I'm going to tell you a mathematical truth of where the 1 over x proofs fail. And I'm going to tell you a psychological truth. I'm going to tell you how people can be deceived into believing these proofs. And the deceptions apply in many cases of mathematics, many cases of science, many cases of life. So let's start with a fact check. Division by zero has been possible since the invention of the number zero by Brahmagupta. Brahmagupta published his work in 628 AD. I'll put an end card at the end of this video to one of my own videos about Brahmagupta. Uh, that video will also teach you how to divide by zero. And I'll put links in the description below. Now today, many people believe that division by zero is impossible. They are wrong, and the question is, why are they wrong? One possibility is that in the proper sense of the word, such people are ignorant. They simply don't know that division by zero is possible. And the easiest way to fix that is to learn how to divide by zero. You could watch the video in the end card. Another possibility is that people are deluded. They may have been deluded by someone. A parent may have told them that division by zero is impossible. A teacher or professor may have told them. It's possible too that people delude themselves. Now the fix for delusion is a little bit harder. You have to look for evidence that goes against what you believe. So look for evidence that division by zero is possible. And you will find it if you look for it. For example, you could watch the video at the end of this one. Now, red flags are warnings of danger. Let me point out some red flags in the way the 1 over x proofs are presented. Usually there is no statement of the theorem. The proof doesn't start off saying division by zero is impossible. And this is a problem because you listen to the proof, you follow it all the way through, and at the end you're suddenly told, therefore division by zero is impossible. Now at this stage, you've heard the proof once, you've been deceived by it once, even if you go back knowing that the proof is about division by zero, you've still been deceived once and you're likely to fall into the same traps. This is why mathematicians always begin their proofs with a statement of the theorem. And it's very easy to state division by zero is impossible. The next red flag is that there's no synopsis of the proof method. So if you have a long proof, mathematicians will say how they're going to solve the different parts of the proof. With a short proof, no one would bother. But it's still important that that synopsis is missing. It's part of the deception. And the way it works is that they don't tell you it's going to be a proof by contradiction. You work all the way through the proof to the end and suddenly they say this is a contradiction and therefore division by zero is impossible. Now, if you knew it was a proof by contradiction at the beginning, you would be on the lookout for the deceptions. 
let's look at some of the deceptions in the proofs. The first one is they begin with something like consider 1 over x. Why? Why are we considering 1 over x? Division by 0 is the form y over 0. The only overlap with 1 over x is 1 over 0. So we're concentrating on one example out of infinitely many. And that's the way you're deceived. So let's consider more cases. Not only will we consider the function f of x equals 1 over x, like in the proofs, we will also consider the function g of y equals minus 1 over y. Not only will we consider the number 1 over 0, we will also consider the number minus 1 over 0. And not only will we consider the number plus infinity, we will also consider the number minus infinity. Now this is another quite subtle red flag. In the 1 over x proofs, they tell you to think about 1 over x, 1 over 0 and plus infinity. And then at the end they spring, oh here's minus infinity, that's a contradiction. But they didn't introduce minus 1 over 0 and the function g of y equals minus 1 over y. They've only told you half of the problem. Now the next deception is when they say something like, consider the limit of 1 over x. Why? Why are we considering limits? The limit of a function, such as f of x equals 1 over x at x equals y, is independent of the value of the function f of y equals z. Limits and values are independent. Using limits at a point, a proof by counterexample says nothing at all about the value at that point. And conversely, a proof by counterexample using values at a point says nothing at all about the limits. Values and limits are independent of each other. So let's do another fact check. Transreal arithmetic has been proved consistent by methods using limits. I'll put links in the description below. Transreal arithmetic has also been proved consistent by methods using the value of functions, and it has been proved consistent by methods using axioms. So these are three different ways that prove that division by zero is possible. You can follow up the links in the description below. So now I've warned you about the psychological tricks that are embedded in the 1 over x proofs. I'm now going to tell you just mathematical truths. And we're finished with psychology. So here is the function 1 over x. In red, I've shown the zero and positive parts of the function. In green, I've shown the zero and negative parts of the function. And for completeness, I've also shown the nullity part of the function as a yellow dot. Let's start at the inflection point at plus 1 plus 1 on the graph. As we move toward plus infinity, 1 over x asymptotes to 0. It gets closer and closer to 0, but doesn't arrive there. But at plus infinity, 1 over x is exactly equal to 0. Now, plus infinity appears in the proofs by contradiction. It's an assumption of the proofs. So it exists by hypothesis. It also exists as a transreal number. Let's go the other way. As we approach 0 from the positive side, 1 over x approaches plus infinity. It gets closer and closer to plus infinity, but doesn't arrive. At x equals 0, 1 over x equals exactly plus infinity. We arrive at plus infinity. And either plus infinity is an assumption in the proof, it's a hypothesis, or it's the transreal number plus infinity. 
So now we can say the limit of 1 over x as x tends to 0 from the positive side equals plus infinity. And I've written that out in red. And we can say that 1 over 0 equals plus infinity. And I've put the red arrow there. When the limit of a function and the value of the function are the same, the function is continuous at that point. So now we can say the function 1 over x is continuous everywhere on the zero and positive parts. Let's look at the negative parts. We'll start at the negative inflection point at minus 1, minus 1. As we get closer to minus infinity, we asymptote to zero, we get closer and closer to zero, but don't arrive there. When we arrive exactly at minus infinity, 1 over x is exactly 0. And again, minus infinity is either an axiom, an assumption in the proofs, or it's the transreal number minus infinity. Let's go the other way. As we approach 0 from the negative side, 1 over x gets closer and closer to minus infinity. It asymptotes to minus infinity. It doesn't arrive there. But at 0, suddenly we jump to plus infinity. And I've shown that with the white arrow at plus infinity. If you look closely at the disk at minus infinity, it's got a white center. It's actually an annulus. It's showing you that we asymptote to minus infinity but don't arrive there. So now the limit of 1 over x as x tends to 0 from the negative side equals minus infinity but 1 over x at x equals 0 equals plus infinity. So the function is discontinuous at that point. So the negative part of the graph 1 over x is discontinuous at x equals 0. Let's put on the limits of 0. The limit of 1 over x as x tends to plus infinity equals 0. That's a continuous limit. And the limit of 1 over x as x tends to minus infinity equals 0. And that's a continuous limit. And for completeness, 1 over nullity equals nullity. And there is no problem. All of that agrees with real calculus. It is in fact a statement of transreal calculus. So plus infinity is the continuous limit of 1 over x at x equals 0. Minus infinity is the discontinuous limit of 1 over x at x equals 0. Or we can say that minus infinity is the continuous limit of minus 1 over x at x equals 0, and plus infinity is the discontinuous limit of 1 over x at x equals 0. There is no problem with division by 0. The function 1 over x does not prove that division by 0 is impossible. Instead, it proves that transreal calculus works. Be totally brilliant. Share and subscribe for more.